In this video, I'll give you my first impressions on how to integrate Nest products into Home Assistant using Google's new API, the Smart Device Management API. I will be specifically trying to integrate my Nest thermostat and my Nest front door and trying to get a real-time live stream into Home Assistant on my front door camera. In the first part of this video, we'll be looking at the Smart Device Management API. And the second part, we'll look at the configurations in Home Assistant, and I'll put timestamps below here so you can skip. To do this project, you're going to need a device access console, and there's a one-off $5 non-refundable fee. This is Gio from Digital Spring Media, and in this channel, I'm documenting my smart home journey, so stick around if you're interested and subscribe. So this is the homepage for the Smart Device Management API, and the various things are available here on this page. We're going to explore it a little bit now. First of all to know is the endpoint is this one here and with various traits that we can use. So we can use it for cameras, displays, doorbells and thermostats. So at the moment no Nest Protect supported. By clicking around here you can find out all of the different types of commands and the traits and responses that you can get back. So as I mentioned earlier to get started unfortunately we need a $5 registration fee which is not refundable but have a look through this video and feel if this is valuable for you and you can get value out of your Nest products then it might be worth uh, spending the five dollars. So to register for the device access console click on the device access console. So you'll need to agree to the terms and conditions and continue the payment. Here you can put in your credit card details. At this stage we need to get the client ID and enable the API. So let's click on this button here now you can create a new project or select an existing one if you really have one. Here in this specific box you need to specify web server. And now it's quite important that you, you put the correct callback here. So I'm pasting it now and create. Now you have a client ID and a client secret. Now obviously I'm going to wipe these out for the purpose of the video but you need to keep these safe somewhere. So what I'll suggest is in a notepad copy paste these codes and remember to label them as what they are because we'll need to reference them and there'll be several in this project. Now go back to your device access console. At this stage you need to put one of these IDs that will be the client ID that you generated previously. You'll need to decide if you want to enable or disable events. I'm going to enable the events for now. We can always change this later. So now that we've got our project, we need to reference this project ID. So it's another one. Let's copy this and put it in your notepad. And label it as project ID. We'll need it later. In this step, we're going to link our Google Cloud Platform and our device access project together. This will enable the API to read all the, all the information required from the Nest products. So let's follow through this. You need to replace these variables here with the parameters and our own um, variables that we saved in our notepad previously. So we're going to replace our project ID now and we'll paste in the client ID. Now that we've got all of this string, we need to copy this and we need to put it into a browser. So if you signed into multiple Google accounts, it might ask you which one to pick. But once you've picked that, you've got a few things you need to check here of the permission that you're allowing this API. So I'm going to allow YouTube, which is the name of the project, to see the information about your home. I'm going to allow the Nest thermostat. I'm going to allow the front door. So this will depend on the products that you have linked to your Nest account. And bear in mind that your Nest account needs to be upgraded to your Google, to the Google account. You can't use your old Nest account, which I actually had to do. Really important to do, don't close this, get this URL and paste it. Now from the string that we got, there's a really important thing to extract, which is the authorization code. So you will find exactly this point in the URL. So look carefully for it. It should be after code and right before the and symbol. Now we need to get a little bit more geeky and we need to use the command line, which I've Pretty sure that a lot of you guys will be happy with doing. But it's really simple for the guys that are not familiar with it. There's a command called curl, and we're going to be using that with this exact same uh, string. We're just going to be replacing 
whatever our own values into this is was very simple very simple straightforward so we need to put in our client id which google's already pre-filled because we put it in previously we don't need to put in our client secret and our authorization codes which you should have in your notepad if you were copying and pasting them so open up your terminal and paste it in press enter now you might hit this problem about using the bad illegal format or missing URL. So it really depends uh, how you uh, you react. So, but if you put it put everything in one line, which I'm doing now, and try to copy that and paste it in now. There you have it. So if you have that error message, that's the reason why I wanted I wanted to show you this. So copy this JSON file and I would suggest again put it back into your notepad. So as explained in the guide here, you have an access token and a refresh token. Now these will, uh, will be what you need in order to get your initial token but then also to refresh your token so it expires I believe every hour. So to complete the authorization process we need to retrieve the device.list which we'll do right now. So we're still in the guide here and it, let's get the access token that we previously retrieved and let's cut, paste it inside here. Get into your terminal and paste in the values. So now we've got a list of the devices. As you can see, we've got my front door and we've got my kitchen thermostat here. In order for you to refresh the token before the hour expires, you can use this command and you'll need to put in your refresh token and this will give you a new token. Now we're ready to use the API and we're gonna get some information in the command line and then I'll show you how we can get the information into Home Assistant. To start making specific calls and specific Nest products, you have gotta know the device ID for each of your devices and I'll show you how you can do that now. This is the JSON file, the response we had previously from our terminal where we listed all the devices and just search devices and the string that you find after the slash, so in this example, this string I'm highlighting here, this is the device ID specifically for the thermostat and for the doorbell You'll see it here because it says type doorbell and you'll find it again after devices. So you need to copy and paste them out in your um, cheat sheet and we'll use them to make some calls now. So now we have all the three components, the project ID, the device ID and an access token so we can get all the information we wish from our API. So these are the results of the information we can get from the API, so the heat, temperature, the uh, temperature goal, and, and so many other information you can find here. So now let's look into getting all that information into Home Assistant now. And we're straight into our configuration.yaml file, and we're ready to go with creating a sensor. First thing to do, you gotta define sensor. And we're going to be adding the platform as REST. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to be calling it the Nest Thermostat. So the resource here, so this is going to be API endpoint, if you remember that previously. So I'm going to copy that in now. Now at this stage, we're going to put in the, your own uh, project ID. This is mine, and then remember when you do slash devices slash, and now we're going to use the device ID you wish to use. In this case, I'm going to use the thermostat, and that should complete this string. We're ready to go on the next line. The method we're using, we're doing a get method, and we're going to have we have a few information to add into the headers. I'm adding two spaces here. First thing is the content type application JSON. And here we're going to use our token from the secrets area. So you need to add this in. I'm going to copy and paste it in. Now we haven't created this yet, which I'm going to do right now. So go to your secrets.yaml file and create it was my sensor secret token and now now you need to write something that's quite important you need to write bearer bearer with capital b 
and then space that and now put in your token in. Okay, so save that. Go back to your configuration.yaml at this stage and let's complete that center. So this is the tricky part, so bear with me now. The value template is what we're going to need to do to extract a specific part of the JSON response file and then use that in, to, in the state in the um, for the sensor. So then if you remember previously, if you've still got that response file that we got when we listed the devices, and that's going to be quite useful. But I'll show you now on screen. Okay, so I've got the JSON file that we had before when we listed all the devices. The way the JSON works it's a dictionary, so I'm not going to go into details of, of how a dictionary works, but let's simplistically wait. let's see it as a hierarchy. So there's a higher hierarchy and then we go down in the inner parts of the code. And if you've saved it as a .json file, and if you have a file editor like Atom for example, you can easily collapse parts of the JSON file, so that will make it very easy to understand where are the values you want to get. So I, we have two devices here, but now at the moment we're only going to be interested in one. The first device is our thermostat, so that's the first thing we're excluding. So we're already excluding everything after line 53. That's half of the JSON that we don't we need to ignore at this stage. So assume we want to get the temperature, and it's called the ambient temperature Celsius. So that is the value that I want to put into the state of the sensor. So there are quite a few steps to get there. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to find where is this under. So it's not under name, it's not under type, or um, it's under traits. There you go. So it's under traits. If I collapse traits, you can see that that's disappeared. So the first thing to do is set traits. And then the second level down, this is where we need to find out where specifically is the information. So if you collapse everything, you can quickly see where the ambient temperature sensor is. So the ambient temperature sensor is under devices and it's under temperature. So you'll need to have this whole string, you need this string, this string, and this string, and you'll need them in, in, in order, and you need that in your value template. So let's have let's go back to the home assistant. So this is the syntax you need to use. We'll put double quote curly bracket curly bracket and then the other end you'll put close curly bracket and then double quote you need to leave a space either end and I'm using the square brackets quote notation but I think there's another notation that you can use with the dot but anyway follow through this example what you need to put in is value underscore JSON that's a fixed element um, that's basically saying tell me give me the value from the JSON file and traits, that's the first step. And second step down was SDM device traits temperature. And the first third step was is ambient temperature sense Celsius. So if you wanted to get another value as your state, you, you just need to change those three values. And if you need to go one step further down, you would use your square brackets again, quote, put in the um, the value. And, and these these don't change really, so unless you know the developer makes a, a major change. To the uh, to the API, so but what about all the other information? You know, you're thinking, well, where is that going to go? So we're going to add that in as an attribute, so we have that in our uh, developer tool, and we sort of can use it later on to create uh, other things. So this is quite simple: JSON underscore attributes, and then you can have multiple attributes, which I think you'll see we'll see later when we do the camera, and we've got dash traits. And there you have it. So if you say you were to save this and then uh, reboot Home Assistant, you'll start seeing uh, this in your uh, developer tools. So inside the developer tools, you can now see Nest Thermostat. We have our state, which is our ambient temperature, which is this one here, and then we have the whole response or the whole traits part of the responses, which is what I'm interested in. We have that in there as an attribute. Now let's get that uh, doorbell integrated to. Okay, so for the doorbell, very similar pattern. We've got another REST sensor. We've called the Hello Doorbell. We've got our resource here. Again, same project ID. The device will, ID will be different, so bear in mind if you're copy and pasting. Or it's the same, because we're using the same token. Uh, value template is different, because I'm using type. 
um, and obviously the response file for this is different also and as you can see here I've got many more attributes I've got type and I've got traits and I've got camera live streams I've got various attributes so I'm going to reboot Home Assistant now and I'm going to show you how that looks so while Home Assistant is rebooting it is a good time to go and get the RSTPS feed for the front door camera so in here there's an example in the guide and replace the values with your own values so you'll need your product ID device ID and your token copy and paste that in the terminal and you should get the stream and this stream will only be valid this token will only be valid for five minutes and it can be extended in a similar way like the other token copy it let's go to the terminal and paste it in and here we have our stream so copy those results in your notepad this is the part you're going to need it's on the RSTP URL so copy this part from the double quote right to the other end it's quite a long string so this is what is what you're going to need to put in the camera um, camera stream source okay so we're back into home assistant it's back up and running now and as you can see we've got all the information from the doorbell and we've still got the thermostat there so that's still work working and now it's time to put the camera into it and actually try and see a feed if that works now bear in mind this is only uh, this is just a, a proof of concept because it will only work for five minutes you need to have a way of automating your your tokens to refresh but this is just to give you an example okay so in home assistant it's very simple to create a, a link to a camera where we're using the camera and we're using a generic platform I've given it a name nest hello doorbell stream and I've got the stream source which is the R uh, RTSPS uh, URL that we got previously again this uh, would expire in like five minutes so I'll uh, get going and try to display it in the dashboard now okay so home assistant rebooted and I'm using a simple card and you can see here is a stream of my front door live and if I click on it I'll have a larger image that I can uh, you know use I know that you can do many things with notifications but I haven't explored that yet and this is just a proof of concept because again as I mentioned earlier the tokens will expire like in one hour the main token and five minutes the RST, uh, RSTPS feed so there are a lot of improvements that we I can do in the future but I'm looking into suggestions of how you would tackle that problem so I tried for a few days I couldn't get it 100% working as I would have liked but this is working this is a new API and I'm new to home assistant and in general so it's really good uh, learning uh, adventure uh, for me so if you want to you know stay tuned for further experiments and projects with smart home devices then subscribe if you want to have a look at the other videos I'm going to link a playlist somewhere here and there's other fun stuff that I've done with like Sonos speakers and Google minis and robo vacuums so just stay tuned and see you later